very much for that kind introduction, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, thank you for the Foreign Trade Association and uh, for Eurocommerce for inviting me to this. I think it is indeed very timely and I'm happy to, to contribute to, to your debate and looking forward to, to your input uh, today and in the future as well. And the uh, title of this, Unleashing the Potential of EU Trade, is uh, very, very timely indeed. And that's exactly how I see my job and my job description. So I'm happy to talk under that title. My goal for EU trade policy is uh, that it improves people's life in Europe and around the world by providing economic opportunities, supporting a more integrated, innovative and peaceful world. And the question is, of course, how we do it. There are many ways. We can make it easier for manufacturing companies to export. We can help service companies to find their ways to foreign markets. And we can make EU a more attractive place for foreign investors to come and to create jobs. And they are all important. But I also believe that retail companies, like the ones represented here today, can be an important channel for trade to boost people's quality of life. From a trade policy perspective, retailers and wholesalers bring to consumers lower prices, greater choice that trade provides. But beyond that, the sector employs 29 million Europeans, 13% of the labour force. Retail companies also make up the backbone of European SMEs, accounting for almost a third of all the European SMEs. And retailers are an essential part of the infrastructure to deliver true sustainable development with your direct connections to producers around the world. You all know that, of course. And you also know that um, you represent an industry that faces real challenges. A challenge of demand. Since the crisis of 2008, many European consumers have lacked resources and confidence. And with 25 million people unemployed, that's hardly surprising. There's a challenge of technology like so many of their peer retailers, must adapt to disruptive digital innovation. That means adopting their strategies for an online world and get it used to a more competitive environment with more cost pressures. There's a challenge of sustainability. Consumers today are more and more concerned about the environment and the broader ethical footprint of the products they buy. And dealing with all these changes uh, puts many firms in the sector under pressure. So the question we have to answer is twofold. Can trade policy help? And can we do more than it's already doing? And this year, as was referred to by our chairman, the Commission is upgrading and updating its trade policy strategy. This is the right time to consider what more can be done all across the board to boost sustainable prosperity. But let's start with the first question. Can trade policy help the retail sector? Well, I hope it can, otherwise I wouldn't be here. Uh, the answer is yes, in three ways. First, by helping Europe export. Trade deals create opportunities for European companies, boosting demands for European products, and consequently demand for the products that you sell. During the crisis, we saw that export to faster growing parts of the world were a lifeline that reduced the severity of the recession. And their importance will all increase in the future, given that we expect 90% of global growth to come from outside the European Union in the coming 20 years. Furthermore, many companies within the retail sector can and do grow by exporting their own services, mostly by investing abroad, and trade deals make this easier. The second way that trade policy helps the retail sector is enabling your access to the goods and services you sell at competitive prices. Tariffs are already low, an average of 4%, and if we complete the whole agenda of ongoing bilateral negotiations, over 60% of our imports would be covered by free trade deals. Our generous uh, preference system offers easy access for products from developing countries. We have autonomously suspended uh, tariffs on more than 1,600 products, crucial for our competitiveness. And we are streamlining our customs procedures by implementing a modernized EU customs code. And our own domestic single market also keep our economy open. Our state rules are unique globally. Our EU-wide standards have made it easier for exporters around the world to gain access to all our members. And while we still have to do more on service integration, the strides we have made have helped bring the cost benefits of competition to vital sectors like telecom. The final way trade policy can help your sector is by encouraging high standards of labour and other human rights, as well as environmental protection around the world. 
that supports your own efforts to bring sustainability in your supply chains. And we do this through the JSP Plus scheme, which offer better access to the EU market from countries who live up to high standards for labour rights and the environment. We do it through sustainable development chapters in all our free trade agreements. And we have shown the potential of voluntary schemes with strong political backing through, for instance, the sustainable comp Sustainability Compact for Bangladesh and our proposal, as was also referred to, on conflict minerals. And then there was the second question. Can a new trade strategy help Europeans by helping the retail section? Well, I can't answer all those questions today. We will be working over the coming month on a new strategy, and the result will only be available later in this autumn. But I will carefully listen to your and other suggestions on how we can improve and what new elements we need to bring out to have a modern trade policy. But I can present the context of our approach and let you, to, let you know some of the questions we are asking ourselves uh, that I think are relevant for your sector as well. The context is change. The world economy has changed, becoming more integrated than ever, uh, than ever before. Global value chains link production across border. Distinction between manufacturing and services are becoming more and more blurred and whole economic sectors are being created through digital technologies. And the political context for trade has also changed. There is an intense public debate, mostly focused on the TTIP agreement with the US, but it has implications for the EU uh, trade policy. And these changes are driving us to ask a series of questions, several of which matter uh, for, for you. Growth and demand in Europe. How can we boost public trust in our trade policy so that it can continue to deliver jobs and growth? It's important to note that the TTIP debate is actually dealing with a new type of trade policy discussion. Those who are opposed are not generally motivated by traditional protectionism. Because in today's world, the argument for traditional protectionism is weaker than ever. The vast majority of Europe's imports are part, components, raw materials and energy. Our economy depends on our access and our ability to access all of those things. And even of our, our ability to export depends, as was said, on our ability to import, since 13% of the value of our exports come from imported goods and services, and that is expected to grow. The concerns in TTIP are many, and they vary, of course, from country to country. But I think it has a lot to do with trust but also the new areas of trade policy that go behind the border, driven by our integrated economy. That is particularly the case for regulatory cooperation. And a new strategy will need to address those arguments, but showing that trade helps people and that it supports other policy objectives. It does not undermine them. And that there is a clear process for transparent democratic control in the process. Because we are dealing with policies that are decided democratically at home, so the same has to apply, of course, to international negotiations. And the new strategy will have to answer questions that impact your access to inputs. Most obviously, is what we do today actually working? The question is how to properly implement the agreements will be essential here. Are firms, exporters and importers alike aware of all the opportunities that was created, for instance, by the free trade agreement with Korea? Is it easy to take advantage of those? Can we do more? Also, we need to work out our approach to the multilateral system. The World Trade Organization is the foundation for the open global trading system. It's essential for many of us. It's essential for the retail sector. We are now working hard to deliver a long, elusive result on the Doha round. Finally, we are back to the table. We are talking to each other. We are preparing uh, for this. And there is a momentum. Uh, that we might be able to conclude this very soon. So we need, of course, to do that, but also to think that we, how we can strengthen the, the, uh, the global system beyond Doha. We need to look at our bilateral relationships as well. We have, as I said, an unprecedented agenda of free trade negotiations. Some are more active than others. Uh, getting results from all that and prioritizing our efforts will, of course, be essential for the whole economy and for your sector. And I'm looking for your input here as well. We need to address bilateral relationship with strategic partners, even if we don't have actual free trade 
um, negotiations ongoing. Emerging countries like China, of course, very important in this context. And a new strategy will have to see how to secure their long-term support for open rule-based trading system. Finally, the new strategy will have to look at what we can do to promote responsible supply chains. I made reference to the Rana Plaza tragedy in Bangladesh, and it reminded us that global integration has a dark side as well. The retail sector, directly connected consum consumers, is of course very aware of this. We have responded uh, with an innovative approach in the Bangladesh Compact, and we also drive sustainability through many other policies. The questions for the new strategy is how and whether we can do more. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry if I leave you with more questions than answers. Uh, maybe you're confused on a higher level. Uh, but we will work intensively to try to answer these questions, but of course with input from you and many other stakeholders. Uh, and we need, we need the, that import uh, of, import of, of uh, answers and, um, and viewpoints from governments, think tanks, business, environmental organizations, um, NGOs, trade unions, consumers, etc. And the discussions today, of course, will be an important contribution. We are traveling around, with myself and my colleagues, around the member states to, to listen and to, to talk. We will have dedicated meetings with civil society dialogue. We have a major stakeholder conference that you can already put in your agenda the 23rd of June uh, to prepare the straight strategy communication. So I wish you the best for your work today. I look forward to hearing your contribution as how we can work to deliver a new, updated, modern trade strategy composed of creative solution that benefits all Europeans. Thank you again for inviting me today. I'm looking forward to take a few questions uh, if you don't mind. Thank you.